In today's fast-changing environment, when unpredictability is the only constant, the teachings of Mushi have never been more relevant. The world may have evolved with battles now fought in boardrooms rather than on sandy shores, but the principles of strategic foresight and adaptability remain as crucial as ever. Through his life and wisdom we can unearth the secrets to navigating our own challenges, no matter how insurmountable they may appear. So as we delve into the world of Mushi, remember it's not just about the art of the sword, but the art of outsmarting staying ten steps ahead and harnessing welcome to the heritage of Miyamoto Musashi. If Musashi's journey suffering produces legends, then Mamoto Musashi's narrative is a monument to truth rising from the shadows of a Japan rife with political intrigue and warring factions. Musashi's early years were anything but ordinary. Each dawn brought new challenges and every sunset bore witness to his relentless spirit. Born in the late 16th century, Musashi's journey was carved amidst the backdrop of a tumultuous era. Orphaned at a young age, he wasn't nurtured by the comforts of familial warmth, but was instead thrust into a world where survival wasn't guaranteed. It's in this crucible of hardships that the seeds of his strategic genius were sown. Musashi used them as stepping stones. With each adversity, he refined his approach not only to swordsmanship but also to life's myriad challenges. He transformed obstacles into opportunities, always seeking the edge that would set him apart. This relentless pursuit didn't just make him a master with the blade but a tactician of life. Each chapter of his journey, replete with trials and triumphs, contributed to the framework of his strategic brilliance. And as Mamoto Musashi was not just a prodigious swordsman, he was a thinker, a philosopher of combat, while countless warriors trained relentlessly to perfect their sword play Mushi, recognized early on that mere physical prowess would not crown him unmatched. His battles weren't just won on the grounds of dexterity, but in the intricate labyrinths of strategy and foresight this belief was central to his martial artistry, while he dedicated hours to honing his techniques ensuring each strike was precise and each parry was flawless. He invested equal if not more time in sharpening his mental faculties, he studied opponents, discerned patterns and anticipated moves before they were made Musashi's duels, often began long before the first strike he dissect his adversary psyches employing tactics to unnerve, mislead and predict his. Philosophy was clear the blade could wound, but the mind could conquer in the realm of combat, where most emphasized on muscle memory and reflex Mushi championed the synthesis of mind and blade, teaching us that true mastery arises when one can seamlessly merge the tangible with the intangible within the annals of Marshall. The Book of Five Rings very few works shine as brightly as Miyamoto Musashi's going no-sho, or the Book of Five Rings more than a basic battle handbook. This intricate treatise penned in the twilight years of Mi'ai's life serves as a reflection of his philosophy, art and understanding of strategy and existence. Diving deep into the essence of the text, one can discern that it's partitioned into five books, each representing a ring or an element earth, water, fire, wind and the void. Each ring not only goes into the intricacies of swordsmanship and fighting, but also connects to larger plans, approaches and ways of thinking. For example, lays the groundwork by discussing the fundamentals of martial arts and Nii's own style, whereas the water ring delves into concepts of adaptability and flexibility, demonstrating the need to be fluid in one's approach. However, the Book of Five Rings' brilliance lies in its applicability beyond the battlefield, Mwai's thoughts on time, rhythm, perception and comprehension resonate with not just warriors but also artists, entrepreneurs and leaders. He encourages readers to see the wider picture, to be adaptive, to comprehend their surroundings and most importantly, to know themselves in essence. Goin no show is not merely about defeating an opponent with a sword, it's about overcoming challenges, understanding the complexities of life and navigating the world with an unyielding strategic mindset. It stands as a testament to Mi's genius, offering a roadmap to outsmart challenges, whether in combat or daily life. Mamoto Musashi's profound wisdom the five novels explained emerges compellingly by dividing his mammoth masterpiece into five elemental novels. Each of these aspects stand as pillars rather than just chapters, 
illuminating the various dimensions of strategy and life, they constitute a harmonic combination of physical technique and metaphysical philosophy harmoniously intertwined to produce a complete roadmap for strategic thinking. Earth grounded in basics, the Earth Book is the foundational pillar. It speaks to the essence of Miai's style and provides the bedrock principles of martial arts. However, on a deeper level, Earth represents grounding oneself in core values, principles and understanding the terrain or environment in which we operate. It emphasizes the importance of building a strong foundation before mastering advanced techniques. A lesson important not only in warfare but in every endeavor, water movement and flexibility, like the fluidity of water that modifies its course without losing its essence, the water book promotes adaptation and educates the reader to be sensitive to changing situations, implying that true mastery rests not in rigid tactics but in the capacity to adapt and flow, whether navigating the currents of business art or personal connections. These thoughts on water remind us of its power and flexibility, fire, passion and aggression. Fire denotes the zeal, intensity and aggressive tactics in fighting, but it also symbolizes drive ambition and the burning desire to reach one's goals. Mushi coaches on how to efficiently harness this fire energy so that it becomes a tool rather than a harmful force. On the styles of others, whereas the preceding volumes center on MHI's techniques and philosophy. The Wind Book provides a comparative study exploring other martial schools and styles. It emphasizes the significance of understanding external influences, competitors, and the broader environment in modern terms. It's about market research, understanding competitors, and positioning oneself uniquely in the realm. Beyond technique may be the most philosophical, the void refers to the place beyond method, strategy and form it is the world of intuition, being in the moment of Zenic. Mastery where conscious thought ceases and pure action takes over, Mushi alludes to the state of motion or no mind where the strategist operates from a place of profound inner clarity as we navigate these elemental terrains laid out by Mushi it becomes evident that his wisdom transcends. Swordsmanship, he crafts a strategic guide that serves anyone looking to carve a path in life, urging us to balance our foundational principles with adaptability, passion, and understanding Mamoto Musashi when famed. The strategy of no sword, because his extraordinary swordsmanship frequently displayed a genius that beyond the bounds of a blade. One of his most remarkable tactics was his ability to conquer rivals without ever re-unsheathing his weapon. This approach is more mental than physical, emphasizing the art of victory outside of the battlefield. Mushi believed in fully knowing his opponent's strengths and weaknesses. Tendencies and fears this level of knowledge allowed him to predict maneuvers and situations, frequently outmaneuvering enemies before the conflict ever began. For Mushi, the actual combat was conducted in the head, with the sword functioning just as an extension of one's ideas. Psychological warfare, the influence of presence and reputation is enormous. Often the sheer weight of Mi'ai's reputation and his strategic posturing would unnerve his opponents by establishing dominance through demeanor and calculated gestures. He frequently won the psychological battle, making the physical one redundant by projecting an image of invincibility. Mushi influenced the perceptions of others around him. He was adept at creating settings where the opponent felt surrounded or outmatched. Not by the prospect of an approaching sword, but by the gathering shadow of defeat, victory and stillness at the heart of EI's no sword strategy is the Zen principle of stillness in the midst of chaos. By embodying calm and centeredness, he became an enigma to his opponents his stillness serving as both shield and weapon in a world where overt action and loud gestures are frequently mistaken for strength. Musashi's no sword approach reminds us of the great strength in restraint anticipation and the unseen conflicts of the mind. It's a proof that often the most powerful weapons we wield are intangible, lurking deep within our brain, while many in the world of the Night Nietzsche Ryu martial arts followed traditions. Mamoto Musashi ventured to improve his brilliant Ikiru technique, the two-sword fighting style serves as a tribute to his foresight. 
Approach in an era where solitary sword warfare was the norm. Mi's embrace of two-handled blades was both adventurous and smart. This wasn't simply showmanship, it was a planned reimagining of samurai battle dynamics, coordination of movements. The Nani Kiru is not only about holding two swords, it's about moving them in sync, fluidly transitioning from defense to offensive with one blade, parrying and the other striking a dance of steel. Choreographed to the rhythm of MHI's heartbeat. Facing an opponent with two blades presented an immediate psychological advantage for Mushi. The sheer unpredictability of his movements combined with the visual dominance of two weapons often unsettled adversaries, granting him an immediate edge beyond the blade's strategic depth. Nanichiru wasn't just about physical battle, it symbolized Mi's attitude of always being one step ahead, hunting for opportunities and using every advantage. It's a lesson in adaptation, challenging us to break away from tradition and continuously reinvent our techniques, embracing change rather than adaptability, strictly clinging to one way Mushi embraced change. He understood that in a constantly shifting environment, versatility was more than just an asset, it was a necessity. Learning from every encounter, every opponent brought a new style, a new style, a new technique, and Mushi, with his keen observational skills, would dissect these encounters, absorbing what was effective and discarding what wasn't, allowing him to stay several moves ahead. Modern Mushi in today's fast-paced world, change is the only constant. The capacity to adapt and be fluid in one's approach reflects Mi's philosophy, whether it's in business, personal endeavors, or facing unanticipated obstacles, adaptability remains vital, and MHI's fluidity and strategy gives us a significant lesson. Success comes not from opposing change, but from moving with it, adapting and converting problems into stepping stones. Just as water carves its way through the strongest rocks, so can we shape our destiny with the strength of adaptation. Mamoto Musashi beyond walking the solitary path. Martial prowess left behind the dudu lies a refined essence of his knowledge. This revered document is not merely a list, but a cup and purr that Mushi forged from his life's experiences. While his reputation as a master swordsman is well known, the Dudo transcends the battlefield and serves as a guide for navigating the intricate terrains of everyday life, providing clarity amid chaos. The Dudo offers more than martial wisdom, from understanding oneself to the nuances of worldly attachments. MHI's principles give essential insights. They call us to be more introspective and careful in our choices, highlighting the power of strategy, observation and understanding. Every difficulty becomes a puzzle waiting to be solved. Although decades have gone since Mushi wrote these commandments, their essence is still globally relevant, whether it's a modern-day boardroom conflict or personal issues. The wisdom of the Dudu resonates in accepting it. We don't only get knowledge of 21 commandments, we inherit a mentality, a way of thinking and being that motivates us to outsmart life's obstacles. Not with brute force, but with the elegance of plan and understanding. Mamoto Musashi, despite his legend balancing the blade, was not without opponents. It is vital to examine and comprehend the criticisms alongside the adulations to grasp the whole picture. Some thought his techniques were unorthodox, even dishonest. While some thought that his techniques, particularly in psychological warfare, teetered on the border of deception, Others claim that Mi's ideas are too inflexible or antiquated for today's dynamic world, yet going further into these criticisms gives interesting viewpoints. MHI's unconventional methods highlighted a key tenant of strategy, the element of surprise. His psychological warfare tactics were not about deception, but understanding the human psyche, and while the contexts have changed, many of MHI's strategic principles remain relevant if adapted appropriately. The timeless wisdom of Mushi as the trip discovering Mamoto Musashi's strategic brilliance closes one thing is clear the skill of outsmarting is not bound by time or place, and his life is a monument to adaptation. Cunning and continual learning provide vital lessons, whether on the ancient battlefields of Japan or in the boardrooms of today's enterprises. 
The concepts of careful observation, flexibility, and strategic forethought are supreme. Mies' philosophy is an encouragement to consider problems as chances to learn from every interaction and to constantly progress in a world that often feels chaotic and unpredictable. Mies' lessons remind us of the power of a sharpened mind, encouraging us to refine our methods, polish our senses, and adopt a mindset of unending improvement. 